Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, 400, 800, 1500 Irish record holder, and now the number four performer in the long course meter 1500 freestyle all time, clocking in at 1434.91 at the Swim Open Stockholm uh, just last week. Today, we're sitting down with Dan Whiffen. How's it going, Dan? I'm great. How's everybody doing? Good to have you here. Uh, I'm excited to talk about these swims. Let's start with Stockholm. Uh, heading into this meet, you you traveled with the uh, Loftboro crew that you train with, all the internationals that had already uh, <clears throat> already already qualified for their world championships uh, for their respective home countries. Went heading into this meet, w- were you expecting time drops like this? Um, I was expecting definitely to PB. Um, I mean, some events I was expecting to be faster and some events I was uh, I was expecting that I wasn't going to go that fast in, especially the 1500. Um, but I think I knew that I was going to be fast. Yeah. What, give me, give me some indication. I mean, what, how did, how did you know you were going to be fast? And I think a lot of swimmers can attest to when they know they're going to go best times, but what was, what, what specifically for you was was that indicator of okay i'm in a really good place right now oh um so we i well i mean it was just the sets i was like going and set like the times i was going in training certain sessions i was making up sets that were just ridiculous i was like to my coach oh we should try this i've just thought of it like off the top of my head i think it'd be really funny to try and like um i absolutely smashed uh, set to do broken swims as well but the week before we go and i was uh hitting like uh best times in them uh i guess because we've done them so many times before we got like a mark each time and then i think just like mentally i just knew that i was going to be quick um so when you make up these sets a can you give me an example of of one that you just made up off the top of your head and then smashed and b uh are is anyone else doing them with you yeah, so I feel bad for some people because I, if I say to Andy, I'll be like, oh, well, the example I said that, oh, Andy, we should do six 500s. Let's just hit them out <laughs> off like 530. Let's see what we can hold. And um, I I go to, and then everybody else in the distance squad and Loughborough would have to do it as well. <laughs> but I mean, I hardly ever will say that we should try to set normally Andy uh decides but i was just like i really want to try this i think this would be a great set to like try break me on and uh, it was very tough (laughs) six five hundreds that's kind of an interesting i don't know interesting why why that set and what did you end up being able to hold on it um so like i'd say the reason why i wanted to do that set was because uh, 1500 you don't like you want to try to go as long reps as possible but um for like a, a long time so we have 3k set of basically purple which is our training philosophy um i don't know like heart rate zone you'd be in like a 180 170 to 180 um and then uh basically i just thought it'd be a great idea to do that two 1500s in a row basically what i was trying to mimic and then um uh, in terms of times uh, they were around, uh, I can't remember, I think they were around like f- uh, sub five minutes and five minutes around that I was hitting. Uh, it's a so long that's... call. Long call. <laughs> yeah. Well. yeah, that's pretty stout. <laughs> there are yeah. six of them. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. Right, yeah. Dang. So who else did that set with you? Like, did Felix do this set? No, no, so Felix, me and Felix actually have don't really do the same ses- sets anymore because Felix has gone down to more 200, 400 work and I'm staying at that 1500 work. So it's we slightly tweak the sessions. Like he won't be doing 500s, he'll probably be doing more like 100s at mm-hmm. uh, pace and stuff like that. And uh, I'm not sure, like my twin uh, did the set with me, Nathan, 
Uh, but he, since he swam Irish, uh, they did it there slightly differently. So they got like a Dissem one to three twice. And then Hector Pardo, British Open Water Swimmer, also did the set as well. So Nice. Okay, so at least you're not doing these sets alone, which is which is nice. Yeah. Um Wow, okay. So so you were confident heading into this swim or into this competition. Um and then you swam the four hundred first, you were three forty four, and then you popped off that fifteen thirty four. You finished with a seven forty four in the eight hundred. Um what what swim were you most pleased with? Uh, the 1500. Uh, I'd rank them go 1500, 400, 800, and the best to worst, or best to okay. And and just give me your analysis on those swims. You know why 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 was the 1500 the best for you, and why was the 800 the second, and why was the 400 okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, my 1500 was my favorite race because of the time that I produced, I guess, and also just looking at the race video, how smooth I looked in the water. And I'd set myself some goal times going into the meet of um, it, the, all the goal times are around what a bronze medal took at the last World Championships. So I think it was around a 1436 high, which medaled at Worlds last year. So I obviously beat that. That was obviously great. And um, then the 400... I had no idea what to expect of the 400. Uh, I kind of do it as a fun event uh, because I don't, I'm not, I don't really train for it, but you kind of have to have a good four to have a good eight and a good 15. Um, but 344 was pretty good, pretty decent. I dropped like two seconds off my best time. And it was my first race of the meet, so it kind of set up nicely. And then um, the 800, um, it was okay. I thought I was going to be a lot faster. I went through my uh, 1500 split in 746, so... Uh, I think that I know in my head that I should have been at least 740 on that 800. It's, I think it was just uh, towards the end of the four-day meet and um, I was probably a bit tired and uh, maybe a bit complacent after my uh, 1500 result. Yeah, which which makes sense. Sorry, I, I switched those when I was saying it earlier. Um, the 400 was number two, 800 number three. So <clears throat> um, towards the end of the meet, yeah, can you tell me about the response you got after that 1500, I mean, it was a big swim. You're the number four performer in history behind Sun Yang, Grant Hackett, and Greg Paltrinieri now. Um, sorry, Greg's number two, uh, Grant's number three. But what 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 kind of response did you get? Certainly, it was a big story for us uh, to tell, but what was it like for you after that swim? Yeah, well, I like to start with, um, I mean, it's amazing that we've got an Irish swimmer on those rankings in the top 10 ever. I mean, I did it short course when I broke the European record. And then I, people, I guess, were unsure if I could convert it to long course. But I kind of knew because I'm a better long course swimmer, I think. So um, to do it long course in my first kind of re- my first rested meet of the, like, the long course season was uh, pretty special. And um, I think... Uh, well, I mean, my reaction after the race is, I mean, I keep, I always do like the head and hands. Oh my God, I made the time uh, that I thought I would never, basically that I thought was uh, pretty impossible when I was younger, but I'm making it now. Um, and uh, I think also, I think a lot of like uh, swimmers in the event recognized it as that G and um, he's up and coming and he's fast as well, which was a great mark to set down before the world championships in the summer. And also, I think it's also good that I can maybe call myself a, uh, a threat for that world record. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, what, three seconds off? Five seconds? What's the world record? Uh, it's 31 zero, I think, 31 low. So 31 like, zero, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you're uh, you're just under four seconds off. Which I would say it's a threat. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, in terms of, uh, so you said you rested for this meet. Um, so in terms of goals, you also mentioned that you wanted to go times that would have won bronze medals at world champs last summer, even though you did not go those times at that world champs last summer. I mean, yeah. which kind of tells the story of your improvement curve. Um, you did win a medal, a silver medal at the Com Games later that summer. 
Um, and then y- you've kind of just been on a roll from there. So heading into these world champs, uh, how, how do you keep the momentum rolling? Um, I think it's because I know I'm not done. Um, I mean, so I after I won that Commonwealth silver medal, I was obviously happy to be the first ever able-bodied swimmer to win a medal in swimming at the Commonwealth Games for Northern Ireland. And But I wasn't happy, to be honest. I wanted to win the gold medal. Um, and then I think that then built into the start of my season. Uh, going into the short course season, I, had a, I wanted to go fast. I didn't really rest for those competitions. And I came out with... Um, I think I was fourth ever in the 800 and break that European record. And now I want to break that world record uh, in the short course season coming. And I think then long course, I was like, well, I need to prove myself again because I'm now I need to put those times down long course. And now I want to prove myself again. I want to break that world record and the world champs and, and win the world champs, I guess. Yeah. Uh, can you remind me, did you go to world champs last summer? Uh, yeah, I did. I was in the final for the 800 and I came ninth from the 1500. Okay. So walking away from that, and then obviously you went to the comm games as well, won a silver medal there. How do you feel like that sets you up for this summer? Just having had that experience at world champs and meddling at a major international meet. Yeah. So I definitely think that, um, I guess I won't have as many nerves going into it, but I, I probably still will be nervous, but I think, also, I'm trying to race these guys who are making the medals at World Champs as much as possible to try to like, get myself familiar racing them and to basically tell myself that I deserve to be there. And then um, I think, I, and also I think that uh, I need the experience of, of making the final on both the 8 and 15 at this World Champs. Even if I don't come away with a medal, the, making a final on both would be great towards the Olympic cycle next season to then try not only just make those finals in both, but try and progress and win a medal at the Olympics. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's a completely different beast at a world champs and an Olympics, right? Because you do have prelims and finals in both that 800 and 1500. I get, you know, as you said, you were ninth in the 1500, but you made the final in the 800. What do you feel like the key is for a prelim swim of an eight or a 15 knowing the next night you will have to swim another one and ideally you want to be much faster, but you still have to make that top eight in prelims. Yeah. What I was thinking about um, for coming out the world championships is that you need, you, you need to be basically not going a hundred percent in the heats to make it back. If you know what I mean? Uh, so maybe like 98% of the best time would be great to make it back. Um, I think, what made it back at world champs was in last time was like 1456, something like that. I think it will be faster this time, but uh, that's like a good uh, 10, like 20 seconds over my PB now uh, to make it back. So I mean, I could technically go 98% and make it back. And then, you know, in your head that, Oh, I've got 98% in the heats and I go hundred percent the final and progress and get on the podium. I think that's what's, uh, basically the challenge that I need to do for myself is to basically knock it all out in the heats um, and, but still make it that's basically it yeah <laughs> does it does it kind of blow your mind that uh, your silver medal winning performance at Com Games 1451 you're now 17 seconds faster than that I mean like you know you were saying you need to go 98% of your best time and it's like your best time has changed a lot in the last eight months yeah yeah it's pretty crazy to be honest um 17 seconds is a huge drop but i think if you put it in context from me going from 1451 to then skipping the 1440s skipping the high 1430s and going 1434 i think that kind of makes it like a bit unreal uh that i don't think anybody's ever done that as well like just completely skipped the 1440s which is pretty cool to me I think I saw, I was actually reading a swim swim article and it said that this is my third ever sub 15 minute swim and I've gone gone 1434. So I thought it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I guess it is pretty cool that my PB is so much faster than last year's and that I guess I just hope I keep up progressing it. I mean, <clears throat> do, does the, can you describe how you feel about that 15 minute mark? Because that is just such, such a 
legendary mark and <clears throat> such a big mark for a distance swimmer. Um, how, how you feel about that 15 minute mark now versus maybe eight months ago, you know, heading into the calm games when you hadn't even broken it ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So the 1500 mark is like, I would, what I'd say is you can call yourself a great distance swimmer. If you break that, um, I think it get, ranks you top 100 ever breaking the 15 minutes. Uh, so that alone is amazing to anybody to break that mark. And I think now that I'm, I guess now looking back at the 15 minute mark, I, I, I give it a lot of respect to people who break 15 minutes, but now going sub 1440, that's like a different ballpark ballpark in itself. And I think that, um, I don't even know what equivalent that would be in any other event, 14 sub 1440, but it's very, very fast, I guess. Yeah, I'm looking at the top 10. Mac Horton's 10th all-time performer at 1439.5. So I'm not sure how many guys have broken 1440, but it can't be too many more than 10. <laughs> I think it's 11, I think. is um, It'd be Ryan Cochran, who would be 11, maybe, the Canadian, on okay. 1440 as well, something like that. Gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty small company. Um so in terms of, it, it, I mean, now, do you think that's a time that if you threw on a suit in practice and did a 1500 for time, it, it like is, is sub 15 minutes, what you would shoot for? Yeah, I think so. I mean, every, in my slowest in season, uh, best was, uh, was 1507, I think in the edinburgh meet and i i think that i've so i've done th- this what well, this was my fourth long course swim of the season the 1500 i went 15 minutes in january 1502 in february 1507 in march and then 1434 in april so so in a race that long is there really that much of difference like how did you pick apart those races 15 minutes 1502 1507 because obviously it's a difference, but you know it's like the difference between holding, I don't, I don't know, twenty nine nine and like thirty point twos, right? Yeah. Um. So I still have the same race plan for all races, but I think the difference between each one of those races that I had in season was not the way I put it together. It was the people I was racing? Hmm. My fastest, the 15 minutes I went, I was against uh, Misha Romanchuk in Luxembourg. So that alone, he's gonna. He went 14:59. He just touched me out. So I was with him the whole way, and that was more like a cat and mouse game the whole way. So, and then when I went 15:02, I was uh, basically by myself in a time trial swim. Um, but I'd say that we were on a recovery week, so it was still pretty fast. Uh, so I still wasn't, I wasn't in like heavy 80k weeks. I was probably on like a 60k week. So, and then the 1507, I was in deep training, like 80k. I didn't even, I was swimming through the meet, training through it. And I was still by myself. So I think the people you race will make you faster, basically. Was this the first time that you had beaten Romanchek? Like when you raced him head to head? In the 1500, it was the first time I beat him, yeah. <laughs> what was that like how how'd that feel um yeah i mean it's obviously pretty cool because he's he was the before i was he was the fourth fastest all-time performer before i beat him um so and also he's a massive name in distance swimming um to beat um especially while well, i keep seeing this golden age of distance swimming all over twitter and um everybody's mentioning uh him florent wellbrock gregorio paltineri bobby fink and all these guys are in that 1436 to 1431 range. So it's pretty cool. And to beat one of the, basically the greats ever, you can basically say, um, was uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, just to give our listeners a little bit of context, uh, Romanchuk won two medals in the 800 and 1500 at the most recent Olympic Games. He's won five world championship medals between short course and long course in the 800 and 1500. And he's won seven European championship medals in the 800 and 1500. So he's a, yeah, he's, he's a, an exceedingly accomplished distance swimmer. 
hails from Ukraine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I remember when I was in Loughborough last year, <clears throat> we were we were talking about those European distance swimmers and how world champs was going to look that that uh, later that summer. And you know, it was it was Wellbrock, <clears throat> it was Romanchuk, it was Greg. I mean, and and now you are right in those ranks in terms of uh, performances, and it's it's super cool that you know even head to head, it's like now you know that you can beat at least one of them uh, because you've done it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it is really cool. I can basically tell myself now going to that race that they're all beatable, basically, and uh, I can give it my best shot. I mean, no kid. Uh, you know, it's like, and in terms of your time, that you've beaten all of them aside from from Greg in that fifteen hundred. Um, yeah. So it's it's pretty pretty neat. Um, we also put out an article just about the altitude training camp you went to in Spain in January, which you made a vlog about uh, and can watch it. We can link that in the description uh, when this podcast comes out. Um, tell me a little bit about that and what you feel like you gain from training at altitude for that extended period of time. So I love altitude. Uh, not only is it a great place to train um, up in the mountains in Sierra Nevada in Spain, but um you are basically just focused on swimming there's nothing to do up there um it's basically yeah there's actually nothing uh, i mean i all i do is i will train and i will do my school work in between uh that's what i'll be doing and um tra- i i know it really works well for me in terms of tests i i see massive improvements um and it's um i think that's why we keep going and um also, I just enjoy the training up there because we are doing way more meters than we would do at sea level. Um, I think I don't, I can't remember how much. I mean, we got up to ninety three k or something like that was my biggest week at altitude. Um, which, along with the oxygen uh, levels, you know, it's a lot harder to breathe. Uh, basically, you could it it could be like an equivalent of doing one hundred and ten at sea level, I guess. Um, so. It's yeah, it's just really fun. I like it a lot. I train really hard up there. I um will do weird sessions of like thirty minute time swims. Uh, not fast, but like at like a one hundred four, one hundred five pace, just see how long I can hold it. And Andy will just be sitting there with a stopwatch and then blow the whistle at thirty minutes. Uh, so they are, and also yeah, I just, it's just kind of fun. And we've got a massive group up there, so it makes it even better uh, to train. Um, tell me, <clears throat> I got to meet Andy again. So I went to Loughborough to film you guys just under a year ago, and it was a really cool experience. It was my first time in the UK, obviously my first time at Loughborough. Um, I got to meet, <clears throat> um, the, you, you guys as coaches, which your coach is Andy got to yep. see how you guys do things. I filmed one of your, uh, suit up sets, which was really fun to do. Tell me a little bit about Andy and what, what makes you and him a good fit or what makes him a good fit for you as a coach? Um, uh, that's good. I feel like, um, Andy is probably, well, definitely the best coach I've ever had. Um, he definitely pushes me, uh, like in ways which I like, if I don't think any other coach could, um, He's just, I don't know, like when I walk on poolside and he's coaching me, I'm always just so motivated to train, especially when he's there. Uh, and um, I, I don't know what it is, our relationship, but every time I'm doing a hard set and he's taking my times, so I just seem to fly. Um, so I, 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 I don't know how to describe it, but basically we are just, I feel like we're way better together and it's um, it's really working. And um, he's a great coach and technically he's one of the best ever in distance swimming now. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, he was he was great to spend time with when I was there. And it, it's great to see you guys both having success uh, moving forward again just in the last year. So in yeah. terms of in terms of uh, outside the pool, um, again, you, you've had a vlog for a while. We've talked about it before. What do you feel like you've learned about vlogging in the past few months or six months or so? Um, because that's, you know, a skill of its own that you kind of have to hone and uh, and master, you know, separately than than just swimming. 
Yeah, well, I've been trying to improve my vlogging. Uh, I guess, I guess, the more videos I put out, the better they get each time. But um, I just really enjoy it. I mean, I'm not sure Andy enjoys me bringing out the GoPro mid session, but uh, I, I mean, I love it. It, I think it like motivates me more to train because I always get so many comments from people all around the world saying, "Well, now they're saying that they look up to me, which is amazing to feel like I'm somebody's idol." I guess. And, um, the, yeah, I just, I always get such positive feedback. I always people come up to me, um, uh, from even at world champs, swim open Stockholm, where I was last week, at Irish open, they always come and say, Oh, we love your vlogs. I'm so happy you're making them because you're giving everybody such an insight into world level swimming. And, um, yeah, also I just think like it promotes me really well as, as well. Like, uh, and also I think it makes me look more approachable, which is great. I never thought about that aspect of it, uh, but that is really cool. Obviously, it does give an inside look into what you do as an athlete, but also who you are as a as a person, as a human being. Um, yeah. But I never thought about the fact that it makes you more approachable, which I really appreciate and I and I really like. Um, I know whenever if I'm at swim meets, occasionally people will approach me and say, "Oh, you're the swim swam guy." and um, I, you know, I try to be as approachable as possible, but I never thought about that aspect of, of being on camera, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you've gotten that experience. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And I think, um, also people see another side of me. I don't think a lot of people know that I'm a twin and it's kind of, I mean, and now Nathan's doing the same events as me. Um, I guess the vlog is kind of showcasing us interacting with each other. And um, I think, yeah, it's I just, it's really cool. <laughs> that is cool. I mean, because yeah. it it's it's always funny when yeah one one person, you know, it kind of uh, becomes much more public, um, or or known in the public eye, <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, I have a twin. <laughs> like you said, it it gives you it gives the audience an inside look into what your life is, and obviously having a twin is a part of that life. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of building you and your brand, uh, you are also partnered with Finice, who is your suit sponsor. Uh, what has that partnership been like so far? And how does it feel to have a suit deal? Um, you know, knowing that that is kind of the trademark of being a professional swimmer. Yeah, I mean it's it's amazing. I always like want. I think that was like as every summer's goal is to have a, a some suit deal, and um, I mean Finnis are great. They've just developed this new suit called the Hydro X, which I think is amazing. It's the best suit I've ever worn. So uh, and I'm going very fast in it. So um, but yeah, I just I I love the brand in itself. It's not probably the biggest swim brand around like Arena or Speedo, but it's definitely going to get there and. Um, they are just, they, I mean, they make some pretty cool stuff in general. Like they've got these smart goggles, which uh, are amazing. I like, uh, they can track your head position while you swim. So like, I I don't need to bring out a camera every time to look at my head position. I can just go straight on the app and it 3D maps my head of me moving like this when I'm breathing. And I just think it's unreal. And then like, I don't know, some they just have everything cool. They've got underwater earphones, which, you know, if you swim for 30 minutes, they're pretty cool. I haven't tried them out in a set, but I might because it sounds pretty fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so you've used the uh, Finis goggles that I didn't. <clears throat> Can you tell me a little bit more about? So you, you said it, you use it for tracking head position. I didn't realize they did that. Can you, can you use it to like, track your time per lap or what other uses are there for them? So they can track your, they track, they give you your splits, they give you your overall time, your stroke count, give you a number of laps you've done. Uh, and then, and then that'll be like the on screen, what you have in your goggle. And then when you take them off and put them in the app, it literally will give you the whole set you've done, like line by line, every meter you've done. And it's so accurate that I did a set I, well, my challenge was to complete the largest amount of meters in a finish got in the finish smart goggle, and I got I think I got 11k in it. That's how many I did 11k session, and um, it was so accurate. I mean, I was it, I, exactly what I'd done, and I could see everything, even my head position. So pretty cool. 
<laughs> that is pretty cool. That's awesome. 11K in the Finney Smart Goggles. That's the record. So, uh, so that's the record that I've only heard of. So <laughs> I beat it now, but I know. So yeah, it's like let's let's just put it out there. If you're gonna beat the record, you know, let email us at swim swam or DM us and let us know, hey, I did eleven fifty or twelve K <laughs> in the Finney Smart Goggles. Obviously, you'd have to wear the Finney smart goggles and track the whole practice. So we have evidence on the app, but yeah. uh, you know what listeners, if you're crazy enough to do it, let us know. <clears throat> but right now, Dan Whiffen is the world record holder, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> um, speaking of world records, we, you talked about it earlier. I'm curious. 1431. that's been a legendary mark that Sun Yang swam in 2011 so quite a while ago um well, olympics oh yes <laughs> i need to brush up on my distance history he won his first world title in 2011 he set that world record in 2012 or he set the current world record in 2012 so now that's 11 years old what do you think it takes to drop for more seconds and to dip under that 1431 barrier because i feel like in a lot of races it's like okay i'd split it this way but it's like for you you could split almost the exact same race and drop four seconds because yeah. it's such a long race so what's is it a mental thing is it a physical thing where you have to train you know train for to, to swim it a certain way but you know what does it take to drop I mean, it's a, it's a lot of time, but for that race, it's, you know, not, not, not that much as, as four seconds in like a 200. Um, well, I've actually been asked this question three times, I think this week, uh, what is, what does it take to drop to four seconds? And I said, I just need to swim again. Just give me that race again and I drop it. But, um, I don't, I don't think you just need to drop four seconds. I think if I want to swim it again, I want to drop even more. You know, I, mean, I want to lower that mark to make sure nobody ever gets it. Um, so I, I mean, as soon as I watched that race footage back with Andy, we were like, we pay. I mean, I probably saw ten mistakes straight away, in terms of breathing, head position, double breaths. I know double breaths are a big thing in distance swimming. So I think Song Yang did it off every, um, of every turn, and I think a lot of swimmers still do it. But uh, I only, I think I did two in the whole race, and it's about that alone. If you're breathing, double breathing, you off the wall, you're losing so much momentum. So that could be four seconds. Uh, just point one faster on rotation speed could be four seconds. You know what I mean? It's just so it can come from anywhere, basically. It's a great answer. <laughs> just need to swim it again. Uh, well, luckily you got at least a couple more opportunities coming up soon with world championships do you have uh scheduled competitions on the books between now and then yeah so i'm going to the adam pt international meet and in the funny enough the london aquatic center where sung yang's on the record <laughs> i don't think i'll be breaking the world record there but you never know i guess i won't be rested and then i'm going to the set of collie meet uh after that uh which hopefully i can race uh gregorio paltineri uh which will be pretty cool and then to world champs so sounds good so basically like one meet per month until world champs yeah is is the pd meet in may i'm guessing yeah it is in may yeah okay nice so yeah that's that's exciting uh dan thank you again for taking the time to sit down and chat it's always good talking to you and congrats on the great swims uh oh. any any parting thoughts or anything we're missing before we sign off today uh, I don't think so. I feel like uh, everybody just, you can watch my YouTube channel and I'll keep you up to date of what I'm doing every week, every Sunday. All right, you heard it here. Tune in every Sunday to Dan Whiffen's YouTube channel. What is your YouTube handle? I've Whiffen got it. Twins. Whiffen Twins. <laughs> Whiffen Twins. All right, so go search Whiffen Twins on YouTube. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Every Sunday, they're putting out vlogs. And uh, Dan, it's always great having you in the pod, man. Thanks again. Thank you.
You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.